Hello everyone, this is Professor Medio Anagila. For this video lecture, I'm going to demonstrate how we can calculate for the density of binary ionic structures. So for this, what we need to know is the lattice arrangement of the ionic compound. So once we know the lattice arrangement of the ionic compound, we can figure out the number of ions per unit cell. For simplicity, we're just going to focus on cubic lattices. The volume of a cube is simply raising the side length to three. And our assumption here, the volume of the unit cell is also the volume of the ionic structure. So the side length of a cubic unit cell may be estimated from the face diagonal or the body diagonal by the application of the Pythagorean theorem. So let us try with this example. Rubidium iodide crystallizes with the same structure as sodium chloride. As such, we can infer that iodide assumes the face centered cubic lattice and rubidium would be in the body of the unit cell, as well as in all the edges. To determine the number of iodide ions per unit cell, we have eight for the Warners and only one eighth of that is accounted for this unit cell of interest. Then, the ones at the faces, we have six faces, but for this unit cell of interest, only one half of that is accounted for this unit cell. So we have four iodide ions per unit cell. For the rubidium ions, one in the body, and the one in the body is actually not being shared to another unit cell, so the whole of it will be accounted for this unit cell. And then we have all the edges. The edges would account only one fourth for this unit cell. So we also have four rubidium ions per unit cell. Now for this question, we're in, we're going to use the ionic radii and the molar masses of rubidium plus and I minus to estimate the density of the rubidium iodide in grams per cubic meter, it is better to focus on one of the phases of the ionic structure. So if you just focus on one of the phases, the arrangement of the cations and the anions are actually illustrated on the screen. So this would be the iodide ions. The red ones would be the rubidium. So from here to here, this is actually the side length. So we're going to use S as the symbol for the side length. So the side length is measured by adding up the diameter of rubidium, which is essentially twice the radius of rubidium, plus for the iodide at the top, it's actually just half of the diameter, so basically the radius. There's another iodide at the bottom, which is another half the diameter or the radius. So you have two R minus. So we have the value for the side length as 744 picometers. When you convert this to centimeters, so this would be 7.44 times 10 to the minus eight centimeters. We will get the volume by simply raising the side length to three so we will have the value for the volume as 4.12 times 10 to the minus 22 cubic centimeter. To get the mass, basically we're just going to sum up the mass of rubidium and the mass of the iodide per unit cell. So there are four rubidium ions per unit cell. It's Molar mass is 85.47 grams per mole. Similarly, there are also four iodide ions per unit cell, 
and molar mass is 126.9 grams per mole. So what you need to do is relate ions to moles, and the way that you can relate this is through the Avogadro's number. So we have for every one mole of ions, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 ions. So if you do the math here, you will arrive at 1.411 times 10 to minus 21 grams. So for the density, which is simply mass divided by volume, so divide 1.411 times 10 to the minus 21 grams with 4.12 times 10 to the minus 22 cubic centimeter. And you will have a value of 3.43 grams per cubic centimeter for the density.